Shinran wrote Teaching Practice and Realization in part to clarify the meaning of birth through the Nembutsu that he had received from Honen. The need for such clarification had arisen because of intense criticism from other Buddhist schools and also because of debate among Honen's disciples concerning a number of key doctrinal issues. In the chapter on Shinjin, Shinran develops the core of his teaching, which forms the basis for his resolution of these issues. Central to his position, however, is the inseparability of the fundamental elements of the Pure Land Way. Practice in Shinjin, or the Nembutsu and the mind of true and trusting from which it emerges, and without a grasp of the inner relationship between them, a reading of the chapter on Shinjin is impossible. Honen summarizes his teaching of birth through the Nembutsu at the conclusion of his major work, Passages on the Nembutsu Selected in the Primal Vow, quote, Saying the name unfailingly brings about birth, for this is based on the Buddha's primal vow, close quote. Honen's Nembutsu is the Nembutsu of the primal vow, the name of Amida said in accordance with the Buddha's aspiration to save all beings. The precise nature of this saying of the name, however, became a subject of controversy among Honen's disciples. The debate over emphasis on faith as the basis for saying the name, or one's calling, versus emphasis on diligent recitation, or many calling, is taken up in many of Shinran's late writings. In addition, there was a controversy over whether practices other than the Nembutsu could also lead to birth in the Pure Land. Honen's Passages on the Nembutsu Selected in the Primal Vow was published shortly after his death, bringing about a criticism of his teaching by monks of the traditional schools of renewed intensity. Some among Honen's disciples, succumbing to the pressure of this criticism, were forced into a position of recognizing the effectiveness of practices other than the Nembutsu in bringing about birth in Amida's pure land. While Honen does not discuss this issue, it goes to the heart of his teaching, which asserts the effectiveness of saying the name simply because this is what is declared in Amida's vow. To recognize that other practices also result in birth is to undermine Honen's teaching, for in it the Nambutsu is not simply one practice among all other practices. Its effectiveness rests on the power of Amida's wisdom and compassion as expressed in the eighteenth vow, and not on the merit that might accrue to a person through his saying of Amida's name. There was, then, a need to define precisely what was meant by birth through the Nembutsu based on the primal vow. To accomplish this, the Nembutsu had to be distinguished from all other practices, and a number of Honen's older disciples developed teachings that emphasized the attitude of the practitioner in saying the name. Ryu Khan, 1148-1227, for example, stressed the importance of the threefold mind presented in the 18th vow. Sincere mind, entrusting, and aspiration for birth as essential to true Nembutsu. And he asserted that the Nembutsu said without the threefold mind, that is, Nembutsu said as one's own practice to accumulate merit through self-power, as well as practices other than the true Nembutsu, fails to result in attainment of birth. In the views of such disciples, we see attempts to elucidate Honen's teaching by drawing sharp distinctions between true and false Nembutsu. Although there are fundamental differences in their thought, in general they agree that true Nembutsu, Nembutsu that indeed brings about attainment of birth, cannot be simply a matter of uttering the name, but essentially involves the attitude of the practicer. A person must possess the threefold mind set forth in the eighteenth vow. Otherwise, however much he may devote himself to saying the name, it is merely an exercise of self-power and cannot be called true Nembutsu that results in birth in the Pure Land. By viewing the chapter on Shinjin in this context, we may grasp the general nature of Shinran's objective, for he may be said to stand among those disciples who emphasize the heart and mind from which the utterance emerged in determining the true nature of the Nembutsu. Thus, true Nembutsu invariably arises from Shinjin, 
But some who say the name have not realized Shinjin, and their utterance is not true Nembutsu. Shinran shares the emphasis on the mind of the practicer apparent in other disciples of Honan. At the same time, his teaching differs radically and fundamentally, for he asserts that saying the Nembutsu is, quote, great practice, practice that, quote, embodying all good acts and possessing all roots of virtue is perfect and most rapid in bringing about birth, close quote, because it is directed or given to sentient beings by Amida. Moreover, this practice is, quote, given, that is, a person's saying the name becomes the Buddha's practice, when it arises from Shinjin that is Amida's mind realized in the person. Shinjin, then, is the key to Shinran's understanding of practice as Amida's directing of virtue to sentient beings. Shinran was the first to declare that practice is given by the Buddha. Neither Honan nor any other Buddhist teacher or master had previously asserted this. In all other forms of Buddhism, which are based on realizing the fruit or enlightenment through the cause or practice, practice must be performed by the person. In the chapters on practice and Shinjin, Shinran seeks to clarify the practice of the Pure Land Way as great practice. And in the latter chapter in particular, he treats the nature of Shinjin as the mind given by Amida and the significance for the practicer of its realization. <laughs>